CataractCoach.com. Femtosecond laser for a posterior polar cataract. Will the air bubbles created by the laser exert a bad force on the capsular bag? Let's watch and see. So you can see the laser was used to create a 5 millimeter capsulotomy or capsular axis. And there you also see the laser was used to create that crosshair pattern, which is splitting the nucleus into four quadrants. And now putting some anesthetic in and some viscoelastic. Now, notably, the laser was not used to soften the nucleus because that would put a lot more energy in the eye and create a lot more bubbles or air in the eye. Here comes the main incision. Notice that this surgeon, even with a femtosecond laser being used, prefers to use a proper blade, I like a diamond, to make that incision. Now, here is that capsulotomy. Look, it's not free-floating. you got to grab it, and look at that little shake that was just performed. That's to make sure there are no attachment points. Beautifully done. Get that out of the eye. Again, now you know, no hydrodissection. So it just looks like a hydrodelineation. There it is, a little delineation. Get that central endonucleus up and out, and very nicely done. Be very cautious. You don't want the hydrodissection because that can split that posterior polar cataract. So let's see what we got here. Now, the nuke has already been split, so maybe we can just bring out these quadrants. Let's see what happens here. Fake a probe going in, and there we go. And let's try to remove some of these pieces, perhaps. So cleaning up a little there. Maybe going to bump up that vacuum. There we go, much higher vacuum. And now we can aspirate these pieces, bring them up. Maybe a second hand to help bring them out of there, but uh, that looks good. Removing those very nicely. And so once those quadrants are out, you'll be left with that big epinuclear shell and the cortex. And let's see the technique here. So usually for a femtosecond laser, I don't like to use those for a posterior polar just because I'm afraid of those bubbles. But obviously this case shows you can do it and have a very nice result. And so that looks good. But hey, we're not out of the woods yet, are we? So getting that endonucleus out... At this point, you could probably just come out of the eye only because that epinuclear shell is so thick, it's not going to let the bag collapse. But, oh, no, going to take the whole shell out. Let's see what happens. So using that chopper on the one hand and probe in the other, there was no hydrodissection, so maybe a little more challenge to remove this. I tend to do a viscodissection of the epinuclear shell, but let's see. Very, very good control. Yeah, oh, there you go. There's a piece of the epinuclear shell. Again, it's not going to rotate much, so you're going to have to just bring it out of the bag without much rotation. And being cautious, you, this is very soft. You've got to barely uh, hold it with the, the vacuum power and bring it up. And again, it doesn't rotate because there's no hydrodissection done. Look at that. Very nicely done. Fully mobilized. Beautiful job. I like it. Taking that last piece out. Now, at this point, I definitely put some viscoelastic or at least BSS to prevent the bag from collapsing as you come out of the eye so let's see what's going to happen next chopper comes out probe still in the eye in position one good 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 what's this viscoelastic here you go beautiful fill position zero on the probe and put that out of the eye very nicely done and now switching over to cortex removal and you can see that posterior polar opacity is already popped off the back so you don't see that anymore but even then that capsular bag back there can be pretty wimpy I'd be very cautious. And so removing the cortex now, very nicely done. You can see the round ring of subconjunctival hemorrhage left by the suction ring from the femtosecond laser. That obviously will go away in a couple of days. And now subincisional, removing that. Very nicely done, cleaned up. And I agree, don't go near the posterior capsule. Don't try remove any little fibers from there. Leave it be. And now probably more viscoelastic, a cohesive one, I'm assuming at this point, to get that bag filled up. And again, I don't overfill the bag either. I'd be, I'll be very gentle with the, the capsular bag fill. All right, so all cleaned up. We obviously sped the video up, by the way. You noticed that. I like to mention that and, and put it on the screen just so you know that uh, we all take our time for these surgeries. There's, there is no rush. A little capsular bag polishing. Look at that. I like it. I tend to be a little more cautious on, on these cases and do just like that. Oh, came out without the viscoelastic first. Very good because you were fast because you didn't let the AC collapse. Wow, I would have put the viscoelastic first. But again, there's so many ways of doing a successful surgery, and this looks like a fantastic job. So beautiful work here, doctor. I do appreciate you sending the video in. Now we have a huge collection of posterior polar videos. We have 
Wow, a tremendous number. And here now opening up the, the corneal astigmatic incisions that were created with a femtosecond laser. She's using a Sinsky hook there to do that and now taking the viscoelastic out. Yeah, we probably have 40, 50 femtos, uh, posterior polar cataract videos. We have a lot of femto ones too, but this is the only femto posterior polar one that I have. But check out Cataract Coach. We have a full categorization of all different types of surgeries. You can see the full list of videos and, and topics there and click on the posterior polar and you will see we have a lot of these videos. If you've got a posterior polar case coming up, you owe it to yourself and to your patient. Watch those videos, learn the techniques here and you can produce a beautiful outcome just like this doctor did. Very nice case. Thanks for sending the video in. See you tomorrow.